Finally, Leatherface is here. This movie has went through more bullshit. I have heard about this movie happening. I honestly didn't even realize it was a true Texas Chainsaw Massacre connected prequel thing for like a year or two as it was being made. I just thought it was called Leatherface. Like, I couldn't get any confirmation that this was actually Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I thought people were just saying that, and then I found out it was. And then it just kept getting pushed back, and it was in, you know, post-production, and it was blah, blah, blah. It's been years I've been waiting for this movie to happen. And yes, I threw on my Chainsaw Massacre shirt for this. I got my Leatherface tattoo ready to go. I fucking love Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like any horror fan does and to give you uh you know an idea of where i'm coming from you know i adore the first one of course i mean i think it's definitely one of the greatest horror movies ever made i think it was a fluke of a horror movie but that's for a different conversation uh the second one i was not fond of when i saw it like as a kid because I just didn't get it at the time. It was so bizarre. It was so out there. It was so different than the first one that I just wasn't ready for the movie at the time. Now I have learned to love the movie. I think it's a total blast. But in and, and it's good that they changed styles and that it was so different. You know, I had no problem with I don't have any problem with that now. I think that's the same of like for uh Halloween 3 where now that's a lot different give you but I don't mind when they change things up a decent amount. As long as they produce a really fun, cool movie, I'm good. Um, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is one. And then Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a very weird franchise. It's got so many different kinds of films within it that are Texas Chainsaw Massacre. To, you know, Leatherface, which this is also called Leatherface. So that's fucking very confusing. That this is Leatherface and the third one's Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, that's a very different field, feel to that film as well. I like that movie. Um, I haven't seen it in a while, so I'd like to go back and rewatch it. You know, Viggo Mortensen and all that. I It's been a while, but I remember it having yet another different feel. And then Next Generation is bonkers. Uh, but a completely different bonkers in the second one. And I actually really enjoy it. I know it's fucking hated, but I enjoy it. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Remake with Jessica Biel I thought was fabulous. I just loved that movie. It was one of those movies where you're like, I really wish they wouldn't remake this. I mean, I remember everyone feeling like that. And then they remade it and I was like, man, that was great. Fuck yeah. And then the beginning came out. And I fucking really liked that. I felt like it felt just like, you know, the remake. I thought it was a great prequel to it. It had some awesome kills. It was dirty. It was grimy. It felt so connected to the, you know, to the film before it, uh, the remake. So I was, I loved it. I don't know what the fuck everyone's problem with that movie is, but I think it's great. I think it's just, you know, maybe not just as good as the Jessica Biel one, but damn good. Um, and then. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, which I pretty much hated. Now, it is a film I'd like to go back and revisit. I don't think I will ever really enjoy it or love it or anything. I just doubt it heavily, but I think I could like it. Um, the, like, go get him cuz line or whatever. Like, Alexander Daddario is gorgeous and, and it's wonderful that, you know, and the other girl that's in it as well. I don't have any problem with the cast it's just the film is silly now that now that you know where i sit on the texas chainsaw massacre franchise let's get to the new one did i like this movie not really oh i hate to say that now this could be a movie that grows on me maybe i just wasn't ready for it whatever but we'll see. Oh, man. I think the first thing I want to talk about with this film itself is, does this movie feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre? That's hard to say. But because it's because, because of what I just said, like one, two, three, four, 
they all have such different feels to them that does this feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film? It's like, well, what is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film at this point? I'm not sure. Um, but since this is supposed to be a prequel to the first one, I guess I will gauge it off. Is it, does it have a feel like the first one? Not at all. This does not feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film to me at all. Uh, you could drop out names and maybe the last like five minutes and you would just have a, you know, a regular action, uh, horror movie. It, it, I, I don't fucking see how this is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I'm not sure really what they were going for, to be honest. Um, this is currently on direct TV. It was released as of midnight. I went on, I have, my dad has direct TV and I used his account to, uh, for that because I don't have cable or anything. And I rented it on there for $10.99. Um, <clears throat> so if you're looking to rent it or see it, I don't torrent. If you do, it's your own business. But um, Now, what I'll say good about the movie is that I think that it's very competently shot. I think it looks good. I think that it's, it's, it's well made enough. Um, Steven Dorff, to me, is the standout and the best part of this movie. He's not in it a whole lot, but I really like him in it. I think he's got the Texas cop thing down his accents solid he's aggressive and intimidating and everything that he needs to be his character makes some silly choices a little bit here and there but i'll say i mean i, I just really adore, I adored him in this movie and i just like steven dorf in general from blade to one of my favorite horror comedies of all time botched you know i just i really enjoy him um lily tomlin is always great so i mean she's good here but underused she's barely in this movie i don't know if this is a budget thing and they could only afford them for a short amount of time but i mean that would make sense the girl who plays lizzie in this movie is beautiful um she's she's fine i don't know i don't really feel like there's like zero character development in this movie and that's something for my negatives but that's why i don't really have a whole lot to say about her um, the girl who plays Clarice in this movie, uh, is really well, is plays psychotic very well. And I like the look of her. I like the, you know, what they do to her to make, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as I can. Um, and there's some decent amount of gore in this and some pretty vicious kills, but also, in you know, on the flip side of that, there's a decent amount of kills that are done off screen or just blood squirting over on the you know cutaway blood squirt, blood splatter, blood squirt. Um, there is some kills they show, and none of them though are like super memorable. I mean, none of them are like okay. There's one that I could say that was like maybe two. They're nothing like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, you know, I'm not gonna be, you know, this isn't a Jason X fucking, you know, n liquid nitrogen crush face kill. There's nothing, I mean, nothing of that caliber. There's nothing you're gonna be like, oh yeah, man, did you see that part? Like, it's just kind of like, oh yeah, that kill happened. Um, and there's some kills they set up that could have been cool, but those are the kills they, they cut away from. So not being able to see anything made it kind of like, Meh. I think that one thing that really felt weird about this movie is that it wasn't released in theaters. I see why it wasn't released in theaters because honestly it's not a very good movie. But because it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, I feel like the same thing is about to happen with Cult of Chucky. Uh, and it felt the same way with Curse of Chucky. Was like it not being in theaters and being this big of a franchise. Like, I feel like Halloween's, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacres, Child's Play, stuff like that, the, the big, big names in horror should always be theater releases. Like, they're big enough names in horror that they should always get a theatrical run. So this not being released in theaters really made me like 
know that I wasn't going into a very good movie. My expectations were pretty low for this film. And it was pretty much what I feared. Um, just from the delays, the fact that it wasn't released in theaters, the fact that it's not being marketed at all. Like, I know about this movie because I'm a horror fanatic and I keep up on this shit online. But th I have not seen one single advertisement for this in any way. Now, in any capacity at all. I think that there will be people out there who see this review and are like, there's a fucking new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie? Since when? And the fact that it's only on direct TV, like you can't rent it on Amazon, you can't rent it on iTunes, you can't, not to my knowledge, I could be wrong on that, but I, I, it's a direct TV exclusive to their cinema thing. So I highly doubt it. So it'll either be torrented, which is lame, <laughs> um, or you know, you have to rent it on here and almost no one has direct TV. That's what's going on with Mr. Mercedes right now. It's a fucking fantastic show, but no one's watching it because not many people have uh, this is just them obviously trying to save their company because everyone's cutting cable. And this is not a good way. Mr. Mercedes is a good way. This is not a good way. This is not a good movie. Now getting into the negatives, much like the positives on this movie, it's kind of hard to speak, you know, in generalities like this without divulging anything. I'm not even giving you a plot. The only thing I will say about the plot is that the movie is set in 1955. Um, but besides that... I don't want to say anything because I feel like it's all spoiler territory and I never want to spoil a film, especially a big film like this, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Whether it was released in a fucking theater or it had a bunch of marketing or whatever, this is a Texas fucking Chainsaw Massacre movie. It's a big deal, okay? For me, it's a big deal. Always. I don't care if they release 50 fucking more Friday the 13th, Child's Plays. It will always be a big deal to me. So, now... The opening of this movie is very blah. Like, I think it's it tries so hard to have that, like, hillbilly, psycho, crazy edge to it. And I feel like most of the performances in that opening scene are just over the top. It felt like a Rob Zombie movie, but to the nth degree. Now, I don't mind Rob Zombie's earlier work. I'm not a fan of Lords of Salem, and I pretty, you know, I hated that movie almost completely. And I didn't like 31 either. Um, just that rednecky, everyone's psycho feel that he has in those movies, but like even more exaggerated. And it was just, it was like, okay, like you guys are psycho, you guys are hillbillies, I get it, but it just is overboard. And it kind of just left me like, meh. And that sets the tone, that sets the, you know, the pace for the film. And that's getting into my next thing. This pace of this movie is too fast. I know that. That's kind of like, really? Like, film can be too fast? Hell yeah, film can be too fast because there's nothing being developed. Now, do you need, like, amazing character development in a film like this? No, you don't. But if you're going to give a shit about anybody who is in mortal peril, mortal peril, <laughs> you're just kind of like, whatever, I don't care. And the way the story goes, like where this story goes, you're sitting here like, what the fuck does this have to do with Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Like, I feel like they could have done, they could have done so many different storylines that would have felt more connected to it. This one just was like, huh? Like, okay, I guess. Like, like I don't know. It just felt like unnecessary story. Like the last five, ten minutes of this movie felt like what the first like 30 minutes should have been comprised of and then went from there as i said i'm not going to get into spoilers on that but if when you if you do watch it you'll see um there's uh, that's a kind of a spoiler i probably shouldn't say that um and the acting in this movie is just very uneven like there's some really good performances i think that uh, the 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 aforementioned Characters I already said. Um, and then there's characters that are like, they're fine. They're good. They're, they're adequate. They're there. And it's like, eh, yeah, I can do without you. I can't. No, I can. I can't do without you. Like, you're fine. You're there. And then there's, you know, a few or more that are like just not good outright. And you're like, ugh. Um, 
the movie tries, as I said, a movie tries very hard to have that frantic, crazy feel. Now, this is from the directors of Inside and Livid um, and Among the Living. And I know Inside is something that everybody loves. I didn't care for it the first time I saw it. I will revisit it soon because I know like everybody loves the movie. And I'll probably like it much more the second time. Uh, and Livid, I thought, was gorgeous. Uh, Among the Living, I thought, was had this amazing opening and I was like raving when I was watching it like holy shit this movie's gonna be incredible and then it just kind of like went not like downhill crashing to the ground like awful but just like kind of like fell down and then just kind of was like meh the whole rest of the movie after like maybe the 30 minute mark um and then this movie on the flip side of that has like not a good opening in my opinion it was very it was trying too hard and it just didn't work for me maybe it'll work for you hopefully it does i don't want anyone to hate this movie and i don't hate this movie but i don't like it um so it just kind of was like meh and then it was just kind of like from there that set that tone and i felt just meh almost the entire time which made me feel like shit because i didn't want to feel like blah about this movie. I wanted to fully enjoy it. Every time something would happen that was kind of cool for a minute, I would get excited like, okay, maybe this is where the tide turns. Maybe this is where things go and get better. And it was kind of just like, it, like, it, it was like, like just a little, meh, and then it just kind of just flatline again. And I, yeah. So I think that you have the general idea of my feelings on this. I'm pretty bummed right now uh and i knew i was gonna be i mean i hate to say that because it makes it seem like well you went in expecting to hate it and you made that come true by no i didn't no i didn't i have went into plenty of movies thinking i wasn't going to like them and i come out fucking loving them if you put a good movie in front of me i don't give a shit what my mood is 99 percent of the time i'm going to to like it. There is a very rare occurrence where I don't, and then I go back and revisit it, and I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Session nine was like that. But as I said, this is a very rare occurrence, and this was just, this wasn't a very good movie. So I hate to say that, and I hate to deter you from the film. And if you're a Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan like I am, you're gonna fucking watch this thing anyway. But those are my thoughts on it. Hopefully it changes. We'll see. So, anyway.